Farther to Marcus's house. A couple blocks. Jesus. What? It's fucking far. Two blocks? No, not two blocks. The whole walk. Since we started. It's a long walk. Yeah, I know. I walked it too. Ugh. What? Nothing, Brian. Tell me. I just wish we didn't have to walk. Well, we would be driving, except that you crashed the car into a telephone pole. Maybe I wouldn't have crashed the car into a telephone pole if someone hadn't thrown hot coffee on me. Do you think I told that guy to throw hot coffee on you? No, I don't, but you are the one who wanted the windows open. I was hot! That's what air conditioning is for. You know I don't like the way air conditioning air tastes. It doesn't taste like anything! I can taste it. Whatever. Remember Marcus's retarded brother? Yes, I remember Marcus's brother. He was a good guy. Not bring him up when we get there. Why? His wife left. Marcus's brother got married? Yes. I didn't even know that retarded people can get married. And why would they not be able to, Phil? I don't know. You are so insensitive. Well, fuck me. I'm sorry I don't know everything that retarded people can and can't do. This is not like some special ability, Phil. Retarded people are people like you and me. Well, they can't drive, you know, some can't drive. Yes, if they can't pass their driver's test, they can't drive. If you didn't pass your driver's test, you wouldn't be able to drive either. But how is driving comparable to marriage? They both involve licenses. You know, it's a wonder you get to keep your license, but with all the uh, telephone poles you crash into. And here we are, back at the car crash. Here we are. Why don't you let it go? I'm just saying you're in no position to criticize how retarded people drive. I didn't criticize how they drive. I don't think I've ever even seen a retarded person driving. And how would you even know, Phil? Well, they have the... They have the face. Are you talking about people with Down Syndrome? Jesus Christ, never mind. You are such an asshole! Well, you know, you're in a bit of a glass house, too. I'm in a bit of a glass yeah, house, too. Yeah, you, you shouldn't throw stones, okay? People in glass houses should not throw stones. What the fuck are you talking about? It's an expression. I've never heard it. Well, I didn't just make it up. Yeah, what does it mean? It means you've had your share of car problems, too. To what are you referring? Time to hit that kid. You mean that stupid kid who ran out in front of the car? Yes, that one. Yeah. Okay. I hit a kid with a car. I hit a stupid kid who was so stupid that he ran out in front of a moving car. Big fucking loss. Well, you were driving pretty fast. Hey, hey, Phil. Phil, do you know what I do when what? I see a car what? driving really what? fast down the street? What? I what? don't run out in front of it. Yeah, neither do I. I'm not saying the kid wasn't stupid, okay? He was obviously totally stupid. What I am saying is that a better driver would have dodged it. Somehow, I don't remember the part of my driver's test where the DMV woman pulled out her walkie-talkie and cued a DMV operative to release a bunch of stupid kids into the street for me to drive around. Somehow, that part of the test has completely slipped my mind. Well, you know, they don't test you on how to jump a shark tank either, but a good driver can do it, okay? A good driver can jump a shark tank. Fine. Fine, Phil. You are the, the master of car driving. You are, you are Dr. Car. Why do you always do that? What? I know it might seem kind of cocky that I got a license plate that says Dr. Carr, but it's a joke, okay? I, I don't really believe that I'm that good at driving. People started calling me Dr. Carr in high school, and the nickname stuck. I know that. Uh, can I please have a silly license plate without you constantly throwing it in my face? Yes, yes! Fine. Sorry. What time is it? 
11.57. We're early. Let's go in. You know I don't like being early. Get over it. What? I, I like to arrive on time. That's funny, considering that you were late when we had an appointment to register for classes together. Let me ask you something, Phil. What? How was I supposed to know that a thawed caveman would escape from the History Museum and cause such a traffic jam? It was on the news two days before our appointment. Yes, the story about scientists finding a frozen caveman was on the news two days before. But he didn't thaw out until that day. Well, when I saw the news story, I kept the possibility in mind and made a point to leave the house early. The scientists said there was only a 5% chance that he would come back to life after being thawed yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, that's what they always say, Brian, but nine times out of ten, when they find something frozen in ice, what happens? It thaws out and comes back to life. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. But I still think they were unusual circumstances, and you shouldn't be giving me shit about it two months later. It may have been two months ago, Brian, but as of right now, you and I are still stuck in remedial pottery. Oh, don't try to tell me you don't enjoy pottery. I do enjoy pottery, Brian. What I don't enjoy is a professor who talks to me about underglaze techniques like I'm a fucking three-year-old. Now we're late. What are you doing? Marcus said to just come in. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure, considering that I speak English, and Marcus speaks English, and he used the words, just come in. So. You know what? Just for today, do you think you could drop the attitude? My attitude? What about you? When I get an attitude, there's a reason. Yeah. The menstrual cycle. Oh, fuck you, Phil! Just try not to bleed all over Marcus's couch, okay? He might not take it as well as my grandmother did. I was 13, Phil. It was my first time. You know what? Take a cue from your grandmother's Alzheimer's disease and forget about it. Real nice, Brian. Make fun of my grandmother's disease. Are you fucking kidding me? How many times have you made fun of Nana's bowel problems? Whoa, 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 whoa. That is totally different, okay? Shitting yourself is funny. That may be true. But you only have one joke, and it is stupid. Um, my poop salad joke is hilarious, so I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Just forget it. Guys, how's it going? Good, fine. Yeah, come in, come in, take a seat. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Make yourselves comfortable. So, uh, how long has it been since we've seen each other? Um, since junior high, I think. Really? That long? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think so. Yeah? Uh, so, Marcus, what have you been up to? Oh, uh, <laughs> geez, uh, I, I don't know, uh, very little. <laughs> Um, how's your brother? Uh, Abraham? Not too good, unfortunately. His wife left him after seven years of marriage. Something about him being too retarded, whatever that means. That's rough, man. Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty sad about it. So, are the kids okay? 
Well, they're five and three, so they don't quite understand what's going on. I saw a book recently. A book to help kids deal with their parents splitting up. Yeah? Yeah. Do you remember what it was called? No. I think it was about an armadillo family. Oh, I, I think I've heard of that. Yeah, I'm actually not sure it was about an armadillo family. But there were armadillos on the cover. And they were wearing people clothes, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm, I just can't remember the title. It'll come to you. Boat. Something... Boat. Arm armadillo boat? No! <laughs> You know, just type in armadillo family into Google and I'm sure something will come up. Or maybe armadillo family book. Even better. <laughs> I don't even know where retarded people can get married. Phil, can I speak to you in the other room, please? conversation. Is that alright with you? I specifically told you not to mention Marcus's brother. When did you say that? On our way here. Well, I guess I wasn't listening. You never listen. No, I don't. Blocking you out is the only way I make it through the day. Otherwise, I would have shot myself a long time ago. Just don't mention anything about Marcus's retarded, divorced brother. Fine, Brian, you know, as long as we're back here, why don't you make a fucking list of everything that I can't talk about? Sure, why not? After all, you made a list of all the shoes that I'm not allowed to wear to your parents' house. What's wrong with that? I don't want you showing up to dinner at my parents' house wearing your fucking cowboy boots. I know better than to wear cowboy boots to your parents' house. How am I supposed to know that, Brian? When you wore cowboy boots to my church's Christmas service, my cousin's funeral, and the dog's graduation from obedience school. I don't know, Phil. Maybe you could have a little faith in me. I am sorry, Brian, but I am all out of faith. You have faith in Jesus. Jesus never wore cowboy boots. Oh, fuck you, Phil! Look, if I wake up tomorrow and I see a headline about Jesus breaking a functions dress code by wearing cowboy boots, I will reject Christianity immediately, on the spot! Sure you would! I would! Just don't talk about his brother! Fine, you've got it, Brian. I won't say anything else about Marcus's retarded brother. Is that enough for you, or should I sign a contract with blood? What's the point? You didn't keep your blood packed with our neighbor Larry. Why would you honor one with me? That was different. Larry tricked me. You know that. How did Larry trick you? I think it was fair for me to assume that the quote, unquote, magic television would allow me to climb inside and meet cartoon characters. You can't assume anything in a contract. That is not how contracts oh, work. Oh, gee, Brian. When did you graduate from law school? Why is your diploma on the wall? Seems that something like that is the kind of thing you'd want to frame and display. Oh, ha, oh ha, I know, ha, it must be up ha, in your office ha, ha, where you meet ha, with clients ha, before you have your big ha, Lego case. Just watch your fucking mouth up there. You watch yours. I will. Great. Fantastic. The house looks great. Yeah, we love it. Thanks. I just did some remodeling. You can tell. How about some music? Yes, please. Yeah, it would um, add a nice ambiance. <sighs> hey, happy days. Yeah, yeah, the theme. That's weird. Yeah, usually they don't play uh, TV themes on the radio. There's a first time for everything. I'm pretty sure it was an actual song before it was the theme for the show. Really? Are you sure? Pretty sure. Still, I don't think I've ever even heard it on the radio before. Neither have I. 
Maybe they're doing a block of TV themes. <laughs> what a weird radio station. Sky, hello blue. There's nothing can hold me when I hold you. It feels so right. It can't be wrong. Rocking and rolling all week long. Hello, sunshine. Goodbye, rain. She's wearing my school ring on her chain. She's my steady. I'm her man. Hey, are you guys hungry? Oh yeah! I'd go so far as to say I'm famished. Let me see what I can dig up. You don't have any bacon back there, do you? Oh, uh, no. Sorry. I'm Jewish. Evenu shalom alechem. Evenu Would you care to elaborate? Um, pork's not kosher, so I can't eat it. Uh, what about meat that isn't pork, like ham? Ham is pork. <laughs> no, it isn't. No, he's, he's right. Ham is pork. Since when? Since always? I thought ham came from horses. Why the fuck would you think that? Oh! My uncle! My uncle told me that ham came from horses. Why did he think that? He didn't. That was his thing. He's always used to tell me and my brothers lies about things that were common knowledge, so we would get in big arguments with people in public and look stupid. Oh. That's rough. Yeah. Yeah. Really fucked up my life. Yeah, you look really sick, like you're about to die. What's wrong, Marcus? Do you have Lyme disease? Why would Lyme disease cause this? I don't know. I saw a puddle of stagnant water outside. I'm trying to make an educated guess. What the fuck does stagnant water have to do with Lyme disease? The water looked dirty, like there may be diseases in it. And, considering that it's right outside, Marcus may have been tempted to drink from it. Why do you always have to act like you're smarter than you really are? Okay, I'm a moron. I didn't say you're a moron. I just wish you didn't have to constantly prove your intelligence. I'm sorry, Phil. I have certain issues with insecurity. 
Maybe it has something to do with my father calling me a stupid bitch every morning to wake me up for school when I was little. Uh -oh. You can't keep making excuses your entire life, Brian. No matter how bad your parents were. Why not? You keep making excuses every time I want you to go to my mother's house. We just went to your mother's house a month ago. Yeah, before that, it had been nine months. Why can't you just go alone? Why should I go? Because I would like you to be supportive. Your mother hates me, Brian. I hate your mother. What good comes from us tolerating each other once a month for dinner? It shows me that you care. That's important to you. I don't do enough to show you that I care? Who bought you that shirt? I'm not buying you, St. Without giving me your time, your energy, your heart. This is just wonderful. Here come the waterworks, right on time. You're not sorry. This is your fucking secret weapon. Every time you're losing an argument, the same thing. Stop yelling at me! What, what are you gonna do? Cry more? Please! If I stop yelling, will you stop crying? Yes. Promise me. Say you promise that you will stop crying if I stop yelling. No. You promise what? No. I promise to stop yelling. No. It's a fucking deal! I think Marcus is dead. What are we gonna do? Shut up for a minute and let me think. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We clean up the mess that Marcus made and we put his body in the fridge. Then we live in his house for the weekend. Occasionally we will extract his body from the fridge and use it to give people the impression that he's still alive. We're going to need some dark shades so you can't see his eyes and a Hawaiian shirt so it looks like he's having fun. We're going to show his body to people? To trick them? Just for the weekend. It'll be simple. For example, we'll bring him out to the balcony and move his arm so that it looks like he's waving at his neighbors. From a distance, his neighbors won't be able to tell that his lips aren't moving. You will impersonate his voice. Me? Don't be modest, kiddo. You've always been better with impressions. What about Marcus's costume party on Sunday? Don't worry, I thought of that too. We dress him up like a bandit with a bandana over his mouth and, of course, the dark shades. You record a few multi-purpose phrases on a tape recorder that we can put under his shirt. This party rocks! I'll carry him around the party on my shoulder and claim that he's very drunk. Ladies, I humbly suggest that you hide your vaginas. Marcus is on the prowl! This party rocks! After a while, I put him back in the fridge and tell everyone that he went to sleep. Then, we party all night. If we're lucky, there will be no comical twists of fate. Sounds risky. Life is a series of risks. You stop taking risks, you die. I'm scared. So am I, but we can't lose our heads. Here, help me clean up this mess. We interrupt the music for an important news report. The world has been struck with a plague that affects 95% of the population. Symptoms include coughing, convulsions, and internal hemorrhaging. If you are hearing this, it means you're one of the lucky survivors. This station will report more news as it becomes available. Yeah. What are the chances? 
How are we both immune? Pretty lucky. Poor Marcus. His brother's probably dead too. Why would you say that? Because, you know, he's weak. Genetically. You really are terrible, you know that? Why am I terrible? I mean, it's a fact, not to mention that his immunities are probably similar to Marcus. Fuck, you know, forget I said anything. I can't believe I have to live through the rebuilding of human society with you. Did you feed the dog? No. Do you want the dog to starve to death? No, I just forgot. Have you heard of it? Forgetting? It's this new thing us mortals are trying out. Probably sounds silly to someone who lives on Mount Olympus. I wish you weren't so mean to me. Sometimes I'm not so sure. I know sometimes maybe I don't really show it. But we'll always be best friends. Really? Really. If Hollywood ever makes a movie about us, it'll be called Best Friends. I like the sound of that. It's a beautiful night, and we call it a bella notte. Look at the skies, they have stars in their eyes on this lovely bella notte. Side by side, with your love, the world. Find an enchantment here. The night will weave its magic spell when the one you love is near. For this is the night when the heavens are right on this love. Thank you.